Hi, Eric Gibault, ericgibault.com, and today I'm going to tell you five things you can do at home uh, during this sad quarantine uh, period and uh, things that are not to make pictures but still uh, with a relation with photography. Let's start. First of all, I, I hope you're okay. Uh, you and your family and friends, you're fine. Take care with yourself. Uh, I, I don't tell you what you have to do because they say it everywhere, so you know what you have to do. But uh, take care, this is important. And uh, I have some thoughts for uh, all these people who've died of this uh, disease and uh, it's a really sad situation. I, I do think we'll go ahead with uh, all together. We will fight and uh, we'll win, but uh, take care of yourself. So the first thing you can do is some cleaning. Very often when we speak about cleaning uh, photography gear, we just think about the sensor. And I'm not speaking with the sensor because uh, normally when you have something dirty on the sensor, you see it. But we forget about the gear itself, like uh, your camera body, your lenses, everything, the bag, all this. If you have a small uh, blower, a small pair, you go like this, or you have air pressure, you can blow it. Try not to wipe with the cloth uh, directly because if there is a hot dust, it will scratch. So the best thing is to blow always. If you don't have a blower, maybe you have a vacuum cleaner at home, a Hoover. What you can do is vacuum the dust, but uh, don't put the vacuum cleaner directly on the camera or on the lens. Why? Because very often some dust falls off the tube. So I recommend you take a plastic bag, like for freezer bags or things like this, and you put the lens in there and the body separately. Uh, if you take off the lens of your body, don't forget to put the cap on the body because otherwise some dust will get in the camera. So it's important. So you take the body with the cap on, and then you put it in the bag and then you start the vacuum cleaner before uh, getting close. And then you put the tube in the bag like this and then with your hand you, you, you close and then it will actually vacuum and make some uh, empty, uh, empty air. It will vacuum a lot of uh, dust out of there. So you do for every piece of gear you have. And then when you've done that, uh, you can actually use a, um, not wet, but uh, a bit humid cloth and to pass over the camera and the, and the, and the lens, otherwise it must, it, must really, it must be almost dry, okay? And then on the screen you can use a microfiber cloth and pass it there. And then very often people forget completely that we transport dust with us in our bag. So it's very important that you actually empty completely your camera, camera bag and you vacuum it or if you don't have any vacuum cleaner well that was a bit difficult for the, the, the step before but if you don't have it you can actually uh, shake it or through, or from, out of the window make sure it's completely empty so nothing of your bag falls down and uh, you may lose it or break it okay but this is important so this is the first thing make some serious cleaning of all your gear second thing is to organize uh, your pictures many people they just download the picture from their camera to their computer and then sometimes they put the year and then it's all in all lost everything together it's not really organized and when they want to use uh, to look search for a picture later they don't find it so i recommend you actually organize all your picture you do as you want but i'm going to tell you how i do it in my hard drive i use only external hard drives but in my hard drive i've got uh, two root uh, uh, files one is called jpeg and the other one is called raw in the raw uh, file in there i've got theme like uh, clients uh, shooting or whatever okay travel whatever and then in each year folder i've got a folder that says uh, for example 220 uh, 3 and the day 26 today and then a short description of what it is so shooting with uh, pepito or whatever okay and i've got my raw files in there for that shooting and then for another date same thing and then in the jpeg folder i've got the same organization but then i've got more subfolders because in each of these uh, shooting and this like this i've got a uh, high resolution which is the native resolution of the camera then i've got uh, full hd files uh, 1080p high and then i've got uh, one folder called logo that is uh, there in this uh, logo folder i've got uh, the same as the full hd but with my uh, signature on the pictures so this is the picture i upload to social networks and things like this but this is basically my organization i know that you can actually use adobe uh, bridge to uh, organize your picture or that's 
Lightroom also does it. I don't like to use this. You have to put keywords, all this. I mean, the way I work, I don't need it. Maybe you do. It's something you have to decide yourself. What's important is you actually organize your picture. And then while you, uh, you do that, uh, open your folders uh, or your, your pictures in uh, Lightroom. And if you see like a shooting, you've made 200 pictures and you actually have only 20 you really like, check the, the 80 you don't like, uh, just in case one would still be okay and then erase them. You don't need, you don't need to accumulate all, the, all this picture on your hard drive, pictures you will never actually use. They actually use space and then you end up buying extra hard drive when actually you could have had some space and save some money. And then when this is all done, don't forget to make a backup of everything. You can use cloud, you can use an extra hard drive or whatever. I know that uh, if you use a hard drive, you, your backup should not be uh, in the same place. Maybe you should keep it keep it at someone else's house, but now with quarantine, it's not very easy to go somewhere else. Or maybe you have a safe uh, against uh, fireproof safe at home or whatever. Do what you want, but this is important to make a backup when you've done all this. Third thing you can do is uh, learn from your own photographies, your own photos. Very often people, they just rush watching uh, other people's uh, pictures, but they don't analyze their own picture. So uh, maybe this you should have done before the, the advice number two. Uh, you're going to take uh, check your, your favorite pictures you've made the last six months or last year and uh, analyze them. What's, what I, why do I think they are good? Because of the theme, the theme or because uh, the way they framed or the composition of the, or the lights, the exposure, whatever. You look and see what you like in these pictures. And then you go and look at the picture you consider that are not good or that bad. This is why I said you should have uh, do that, done that before erasing the bad picture, as I said before. Okay, so you check your picture and then you analyze why do you think this picture is bad. Is the theme not interesting? Is my composition no good? Is uh, the framing no good? Is the lighting no good? Exposure, whatever. I don't speak about the really bad pictures uh, or technical failure, but this picture that you thought they were going to be okay and they're not, okay? So you analyze that, you check, and you, you, you see uh, how it goes. And what's very important is that you must see if your uh, favorite pictures are the older one or the later one. Why? Because if you normally uh, people should go and better the technique so if your favorite picture are the latest one and the older one are not that good it means you're actually improving but sometimes it's not like this you see pictures you were making a year ago and you prefer the way they look that what you do now why because you've stopped doing something so you have to analyze all this and this is really only if you take time to analyze your own picture that you can actually better uh, your technique and everything and uh, maybe the what things you were doing, you're not doing anymore, or things you're starting to do. And so you can apply this in the future. So it's very important you analyze your own work. Now you've got all of your pictures ready. You can make a selection of about your 50 best pictures. And uh, well, if you make several kinds of pictures like uh, landscape, macro, models, whatever, you pick like 10 in each, like you have five themes you actually work on. You take 10 pictures of each, so you have about 50 pictures. And then you prepare them to publish them on social networks to get people to know your work. Even if you're not a professional, it's always good to show what you're doing. Well, it depends on you, but it may be good to, to, to show what you do, okay? So uh, it's important. Uh, there are many people saying, oh yeah, for Facebook, you need such size or whatever or this and that, so you don't lose quality. Well, I always put my picture in 1080 high and uh, 72 DPI. I never had any problem, no loss of quality, nothing. So I don't know why other people make some bigger or whatever. I think that works this way, no problem. And then when you've prepared your picture, don't forget that social networks that don't support, normally they don't support Adobe RGB. So export them to sRGB, that's very important. Otherwise you will have a color shift. And when your pictures are ready, then you can publish to social networks. If you use Facebook, make some uh, folders or whatever, depending, depending on each theme you're working, like macro photography, whatever. And then you go and upload your picture to Facebook, to uh, 500px or uh, Flickr. If you use it, don't use it anymore, but if you use Flickr. And then there's a social network that many people actually look in a, this way, you know. Uh, it's Instagram because uh, there, at the beginning, Instagram was just making pictures with your phone and put some filters and the, the quality was not always there. 
But now, many people that don't use uh, the Instagram camera, they actually uh, prepare the cam they make the picture and then they upload it to their telephone and then from the smartphone they actually upload it to, to uh, Instagram. So the quality is the same as the one you publish on Facebook or New Flickr or whatever, it's actually the original picture. The only thing is uh, Instagram, uh, at, at the beginning I had a square format and now they have a four, five, four fifth format. It means that if you're on three two or four third, it will cut your picture. So to avoid this, there is an app which is free. It works, it exists on Android and also on iPhone. It's uh, photo grid, uh, photo and grid, uh, G-O-N-O-I-D. And uh, it's free uh, if you have the, the advert and if you pay, you don't have any advert, but it doesn't matter. What it makes, it makes some uh, sidebars, top bars, to keep the proportion of your picture without cutting. You can decide the color of the, bar of the bars and uh, if you, or if it's like an echo of your pictures or whatever, there are many possibility and uh, you sign at the bottom or you, you can erase the commercial sign they have, the signature that's there, it's actually, you have the option to remove it or this, free. Okay, so it's very easy. But Instagram is a great place to publish your picture. But I think this is the right time to uh, Take some time and public publish your picture so people see you what you actually do. Well, I hope you like this video. Don't give up. We will fight. We will win. Okay, we're all together in this and uh, we'll win this uh, horrible disease, okay? If you have not done yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a small button down here and also a small bell. If you click on the bell, you get notified uh, when I upload a new video. My website, erigipo.com. If you have any question, you can leave a comment below. Send me an email to info at erigipo.com. And below, I also put links of my gear on Amazon, also links to other parts of my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Bye.